And I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you. I feel extremely humbled to share my starting career in front of all of you as successful leaders. I've been asked to share my experiences as a practicing scientist and to share my experiences in the media world. Um, so I will start by sharing some of my background. I'm not a BBC, so it can also mean British-born Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in China. I came to the UK in 2005 and I'm indebted to the Clarendon Scholarship funded by the Oxford University. And in my final year undergraduate in Beijing, I had this crazy dream because, uh, as you all know, the hard drive in our computers are getting denser and denser. So we need a new technology to make the growth of computers to sustain. So I wanted to make a pure metal computer. Um, using the giant magnetoresistance technology, which won a Nobel Prize in 1997. And I studied the materials, studied what their fundamental pro properties are, and then discovered my next dream, which was to come to Oxford to study quantum computing. To me, that word was just from like a remote planet. And I heard um, in 2004, for the first time I heard about the word carbon nanotubes, carbon buckyballs, and metallofullerenes. My partner is often laughing at me saying, Lin loves those things just because she loves pronouncing them. <laughs> <laughs> So my PhD research was to use carbon nanotubes, which are um, tiny tubes of a billionth of a meter. And then we can put tiny footballs in them. So those footballs are even smaller than those tiny tubes. And then each football would carry a quantum bit. And then if we have hundreds of them, then we can make a hundred quantum bit, quantum computer and that would give us billions of times computing power. And after that, um, during my time at Oxford, my PhD supervisor was telling me uh, in the second year, the important thing is not for you to carry out cutting edge research, but also to bring your research to the world so the world can know what we are doing. So I entered lots of uh, speed lecture competitions run for the science students. And I did go, I did win the Oxford region and I tried to go to the national and even the world final. So that's where my science communication passion came from. And then I realized my younger dream to become a research fellow. Back in 2008, I was trying to contribute to solve the world energy problem. So I was studying a new kinds of materials, more chemical, called ionic liquids, as well as aqueous solutions for the protection of the environment. And my paper was actually officially accepted yesterday on a top journal, so I was really happy about it. <laughs> so that paper was about water, so the water in our house is actually the most complicated liquid in nature. There are probably 300 to 600 papers published in the best journal Nature to study the properties of it. And instead of just getting a, a glass of water from our tap, we look at them in our computers. So we put them, um, like our human body, we are made up of molecules, and each molecule is made up of atoms, and the atoms can be made up of electrons and the nucleus. So my goal is to study what's the behavior of the electron, and uh, say if Pinky and Eleni are the two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, three atoms forming a water molecule, how we interact 
and actually form a water molecule of this shape, why is that the most stable structure? And if all of us in this conference center, we are all water molecules, what would happen if we are all put into a same big box? And if something else comes in, a table, a molecule of table sort, how would we interact each other? Then that would determine many things, such as if a liquid can be used as the next generation of electrolytes in batteries, and if some pollutants would be easily get reacted into the water. And then I was looking for, for two or three years about this fellowship called British Science Association Media Fellowship. Uh, I may have been the first uh, first person who wins this fellowship um, because English, whose first language is not English. And so it's a competition for all the academics and the researchers from institutions across the UK as well as national laboratories. There was thousands of media savvy professors and um, researchers who have applied and I was fortunate enough to get this one place at the Financial Times. And uh, during my time there, actually, uh, the head office is only five minutes walk from here at Southwark Bridge. And I had one of the most beautiful two months working there. Every day, I, was, I got the opportunity to interview and meet all these uh, great intelligent professors company CEOs or chairman or the chairman of a, of a charity trust and they all bring us this extremely touching and passionate story about their product which deeply touched me and now it's another challenge for me to translate that into the paper for the general public that also taught me it is important to not only carry out cutting edge research, not only to bring great products like Nielsen and many other great companies do, but also to get out there, to let everybody know about it and let everybody benefit from it. And being a scientist is not, it's not, it's with glamour, actually. In March, I was fortunate enough to be invited to attend the L'Oreal UNESCO Women in Science Award Ceremony. And then five laureates, each of them representing a continent, to be, to be presented this prestigious award, two of the previous L'Oreal laureates, they were awarded Nobel Prize. In, uh, one of them is the first female Nobel Prize winner in chemistry in the past 45 years, and she's from Israel. And I like, I'd like to share two of their quotes to end uh, my part of the experience and the story. So the laureate from Europe, Professor Patiba Gai, mentions, if you want to be visible, you have to be different. And what she did was drilling this hole in a million pound cost of high resolution TEM, and, uh, which is tunneling electron microscope, so that enabling we can not only see static atoms and molecules under the microscope, but can modify the temperature and the environment to see how those molecules react with each other. So that's a revolution. Imagine if I were a PhD student, would I dare drill a hole and waste two million pounds? I dare not. <laughs> and um, the L'Oreal representing Latin America is, she went on the stage in this sparkly bodycon dress with her very sexy salsa moves. And her opening sentence for the award is, a discovery in science is like an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> so courage, passion, and have some fun is all I want to share.